Hello and welcome to 5-Pin Link. Today we're looking at Tone Booster's dual VCF plugin. Um, I'm looking at it on iOS, but it's exactly the same on the desktop, so the video still applies. We're going to look at the top bar first. If you look on the top left-hand corner, you see the name and the logo. Press on that, it'll take you to the Tone Booster's website. Uh, we move along a bit and you'll see the preset selector. You've got a left and right arrow for going up and down presets, or you can click on the name and choose anything in the list you like, like so. Um, after that we've got our A, B settings. Now the way A, B settings work is if you've got a preset loaded, that's your A, then you can go to B, change some settings, and you can compare it with the original setting to see what it's like. Easiest way to do that is to show you. So that's what A sounds like. We're going to go to B, uh, change a few settings, like so. There's the B setting, and there's the original settings. So um, after that, we've got undo and redo. So if I press undo, you'll actually see that the settings I made for the B setting have been undone. Uh, um, or you can hit redo as well, and the settings will be remade. Um, I'm going to go back to this is dual VCF, uh, because the next one after that is copy and paste. So if we go to our preset, we'll choose one, press copy, then we'll go to an empty slot. We can press paste. Now we have that in two slots. We can um, change any pre settings we want and we can double click the name and rename it. And that's how you create your own presets by copying and pasting if you want, but you can start from fresh as well uh, by pr choosing an empty preset. After that, we've got another drop down menu, uh, which is the Tone Booster's standard coloring menu. I'm going to leave it on berry and mint for now because that's what will be loaded when you first install it. We've got the three line uh, hamburger menu and that's got show tool tips and export program bank as. Export program bank as lets you save your presets as a bank uh, that you can use on the desktop, chop and change between the two as much as you like. And the tool tips, if you hold a control uh, long enough, you'll see a tool tip pop up and it'll tell you what the control does. So we're going to move down to the filters. We've got filter one and filter two, and in the middle, middle we've got envelopes. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to turn off. Uh, first, we'll ch choose a filter setting just so you can see it. Um, then I'm going to turn off filter uh, filter two because the controls for filter one and two are exactly the same. So I'll just show you the controls for filter one, and then you'll be able to use both. Uh, as you saw on filter two, you've got an on-off power switch. You've got a filter selector that goes from pass through, uh, through low pass, high pass, and band pass. In each one, you've got sub uh, menus as well with different types of filters in. Um, you look at the actual filter display, you can see it modulating left and right. That's because of the LFO at the bottom, which we'll cover in a moment. Um, you'll see a dot on the display, and you can move the dot like so, uh, and that will... Um, change the frequency of the filter the frequency is also known as cutoff um, which is this dial here and as you can see when I change the dial the dots moving and the filter display is moving as well next to that you've got your resonant control or Q and as you can see the resonant peak on the filter in the display is going up and down as well and you've got a drive control so the easiest way to hear what they're doing is to play a beat you can hear the resonance go up there. You can hear, hear the filter sweep lowered here by changing those dials. Uh, the drive is very um, material and filter choice dependent. So it can be a bit more bitey on some filters, uh, a bit more bitey on particular material. So you'll just have to go through the filters and see which ones you like. That covers all the filter controls for filter one, the filter controls for filter two are exactly the same. Uh, we cover the envelope now. And in the envelope, you've got F1, Q1, attack and release. Attack and release are the amount of time it takes the envelope to open. That's from zero to full on, that's your attack. And then the release is from full on back to zero, and that's the amount of time it takes for it to do that. So on and off, those are the amounts of times it takes. So that's your attack is turning on, release is turning off. Now, uh, the easiest way to show that is for me to play it, but I'm going to tell you that F1 goes to the cutoff or frequency of filter one, 
and Q1 goes to the resonance or Q of filter 1. And if I turn on the second envelope, you'll see that there's F2 and Q2 does the same thing. There's only one envelope. It covers both filters. So, um, But you can inverse the controls as well. So you can actually turn these dials down as well as up to go in the opposite direction. I'll play it and you'll hear the, the sort of thing we're talking about. Now notice while it's playing, you can actually see on the dials themselves, you can see the modulation taking place, not just on the actual filter controls, but in the envelope controls as well. So you can actually see uh, where the actual controls are going just by looking at the control um, in terms of the modulation. Now another thing to take note of here is you double tap, double tap a control and it resets it to its default position. So there now I've, I've reset it so the envelope is actually doing nothing. Well, the next thing we're going to look at in the plugin is the LFO. So if you look on the right hand side of the LFO here you'll actually see F1, Q1, F2 and Q2. Now that's the LFO that's being sent to that particular control. So F1 is being sent to the F control up here on the top left hand side, which is the frequency or cutoff of filter 1. Q1 is the resonance or Q of filter 1 and F2 and Q2 are the same for filter 2. Again, I'm only going to show you filter 1 because filter 2 does the exact same thing look at the top bar here you'll see a copy a paste and an invert um, so what we'll do is we'll copy the shape here from f1 and if i change to f2 in the lfo control there i can press paste and you'll see it's now the same shape as f1 if i hit inverse which is next to your paste it inverses the modulation so that's that control next over here you'll see that we've got um some shapes so you've got x which will delete. You've got sine wave, you've got uh, a kind of triangle, a square wave, which is kind of an analog square wave. It's actually got a bit of a curve on it. Uh, we've got saw up, saw down. Um, this is random, and this is, it seems to be uh, random and randomly changing all the time as well. Um, I haven't actually looked in the manual, but that's what it seems to do. Um, we'll go back here to uh, the sine wave and we'll just drag a few bits up and down. Notice if I double click on a dot, it will delete it. If I double click in an empty space, it will create a new dot. And I can drag and select dots and move them around like so. If we go back to the top bar of the LFO, you'll see beat sync. Beat trigger and free in the drop down selector or drop up selector as this one is. Um, what this is, is you've got beat sync, which is synced to the beat and the play position. And next to that, you've got your uh, LFO period, which is the time of that beat sync. So um, let's just put that back to one and you can go up uh, to 64 or one, one beat. Um, then you've got beat trigger, which is the LFO is triggered on beat, but it's free running. So you, you've you got a free running LFO, but it's actually triggered on beat. So it's triggered by each down beat, but it's free running. And then you've got your normal free running LFO. So if we play through them, you'll see what they do. So you can get a lot of effects by using the different settings there. Now, the next thing along we have is F phase and Q phase. And what this does is it changes the phase position of the LFO for the uh, frequency filters, uh, the frequency settings on the filters as the LFO plays and the um, Q settings on the filters as those filters play so you've got f1 here if i change the f phase now you'll actually see that the 
play bar at the bottom of the LFO moves backwards and forwards as I move it up and down because it's changing the start point of the LFO in relationship to the track that's playing. Um, so the same thing happens with Q. If you move the Q phase, so you can move the Q phase of the uh, the Q controls for the LFOs. Um, and you've also got a depth control here for each LFO as well. And that's individual to each LFO for the separate controls. That pretty much covers the LFO controls. It's very basic and just does what it's supposed to do. After that, we've got a limiter. So it's just a, a basic peak limiter. It just stops any nasty peaks. Auto filters have a, an ability to do crazy things to volume um, and just sometimes they'll actually kick your earwax into the back of your eyeballs. So uh, it's nice to have a, a, a peak limiter at the end there just to keep things nice and safe. And um, we'll see you on the next video.